friends. So today we're not doing exactly a tutorial, but we are doing something um, that should work in theory. We're going to use watercolors and we're going to use watercolor pencils. And the focus is gonna be more on the watercolor pencils than on the actual watercolors. In fact, I really just wanna use watercolors to do the background color and to do her skin tone. And part of that is just laziness on my part because it, it seems like it's a lot easier to handle it that way. So I'm grabbing my watercolors and I'm going to add a little bit of water to the colors that I wish to activate, a yellow ochre. And you can't see it, but a scarlet hue as well as a sky blue whose name I have forgotten. And I'm gonna give those a second and then I'm gonna go ahead and mix my colors up. And before I start using color pencils or um, watercolor pencils, and technically they're not even watercolor pencils, I'm using Derwent Intense pencils. So I'm using um, water soluble pencil inks, I guess. Um, I wanna make sure my paper is entirely dry. So that means getting the color on early and giving it plenty of time to dry out. Because I wanna take advantage of the texture of my paper. So we're gonna start with this lovely sky blue color. And I'm using a round four for the most part. Um, because there's so many little tight areas in here. And if you have any excess color, you're going to aha, want to go ahead and absorb some of that using some paper towels. Oh, shoot. Super Butterfingers tonight, not feeling really good. All right, so to do that, you're going to create a thirsty brush by removing excess water using your paper towel. And we're just going to absorb and distribute our color a little more evenly. Okay. And I'm gonna go ahead and mix up the skin tone while I wait for my sky to dry. All right, so I'm gonna let that dry. All right, our blue paint has dried enough that we can apply the skin tone. It is not, of course, dry enough to put pencil color over, but I want to get my watercolor established early so that I have time to work with it. And I have not really tried this technique before, but I did want to play around with my Derwent Intense pencils as more of a medium on their own rather than as a way of adding details to my watercolors. And I thought you guys might benefit from that, especially those of you who are following along with my Watercolor basic series. So I've got the skin filled in. Just gonna pick up excess paint and let that dry. All right, guys, my watercolors have fully dried and I'm going to start with something that's a little unusual for me. I'm gonna start by applying the shadow. And you'll notice I only applied one layer of watercolor to her skin, very similar to the single layer watercolor tutorial I shared with you guys. Because we're really focusing on using these Derwent Intense pencils. And once you add water, these things really are intense. So I do need to be careful. I'm trying to have a light hand right now. All right, next we're gonna take some clean water. I'm 
Can you guys see how intense that gets? And basically after we've sort of um, activated it with water, it's gonna be like ink. We're not going to be able to rework it. We will be able to layer on top of it. And if this is too hot for you, you can always add another layer of the skin tone on top of it after it's dried, which may be the route I take. We'll see, I wanna see how it looks once it's dry since this is a new technique for me. But you see, everywhere we put the pencil down, there is still a fairly harsh pencil mark. So it is something you're going to want to be aware of as you're working with these pencils. Next, we're gonna go ahead and start working with this pink on um, the rose, I think, in the background. We've got, got a base layer of color applied. Now I'm going to start activating it very gently with this size four round. And after this dries, we can always build up more color if we wish. And I am working on a paper that has some texture. It's a pretty decent little um, cotton based um, watercolor paper. It is fluid 100 watercolor paper in case you're interested. Um, it is one of the more affordable, easy to find watercolor papers. You can get it in a small size like this four by six here. If you're interested in trying it before you commit, I like it because I can get it in this small size as stated and it's on a block so I don't have to stretch it. which makes it really useful for these sort of little videos where I wanna to get to demonstrating the techniques as quickly as possible. So you see, most of my pencil strokes are not brushing out, which is something I knew would happen. It's one of the reasons why I didn't use um, watercolor pencil on the face. I'm going to allow the rose to dry and I'm going to work on darkening the shadows using the premix watercolor. Now one of the nice things about the fact that these pencils are indelible after you've applied water is you can layer them and they shouldn't become too muddy because you won't be reactivating prior layers. All right, so I'll go ahead and let that dry. All right, now that the first layer of my rose is dried, I'm gonna go back in and work on building up color, but also hiding some of these, um, some of the pencil marks that are on there. And I'm using the same color I started with, Carmine Pink. All right, gonna go ahead now. and work on activating that carmine pink. And then after that dries, we'll go ahead and switch to a different color. Build up a little bit more contrast than we're gonna be able to get with this. But I'm gonna go ahead and go back into the skin tone. And you 
guys can see that that purple, or rather it was a mauve, let's see, what mauve did I even use? Fuchsia. Uh, that fuchsia hasn't gone anywhere. So this is a good way to use a color like fuchsia as your shading for a lighter skin tone and be able to knock some of the heat that comes from using such a warm color, be able to knock some of that down by applying your skin tone on top of it. All right, now we let that dry. All right, so now that that's dry, I'm gonna use a little crimson and hopefully add some blush to her lips. And I'm doing it very lightly. And some blush to her cheeks. Blend it just a little bit. Add a little bit above her eyes. And then I'm going to use iris blue to add some shade to her eyes. I'm gonna activate that. Could be a little too intense. It's okay, can always knock that back with a little bit of wash. Yeah, no, don't wanna use that. Looking for a scrap piece of paper because I want to test the color. I'm looking for, and I might not get it, but I'm looking for a blue that is, ah, uh, maybe so, that's warm. Nope, it's got green in it. A little warmer though than the one I had before. A warmer blue that I can use to darken. Maybe that up the sky a little bit. Yeah, I think that'll work. So we're going to use peacock blue. Go ahead and add a little bit of it here and there, just to darken up the sky a bit. That might be too much but I can pull from that area when adding a little bit to other areas. All right, I'll let that dry and come back to it. Okay, now that that's had a chance to dry, I do wanna add a little more of the peacock blue here and there. And I may end up going back over it with the sort of ultramarine blue that I initially used just to sort of marry the two. For me, it, it does make me a little uncomfortable that I am leaving so many pencil marks on the page. Um, and there, I could definitely improve my, my pencil skills, you know, be more delicate, that sort of thing. Um, I've grown very reliant on markers and watercolors hiding sort of the majority, being able to blend out my brush strokes instead of having to actually be careful. Now, I mean, I do have some fine motor control issues, so there may not, this may not ever be something that I'm going to be proficient at just because, you know, physical limitations. But um, I, it was something I also had trouble with when I was doing the um, last month's Sketchbox challenge with the graphite. So it may be something that's worth investing in, investing my time in. All right, I'm gonna let those dry, that dry. And I'm gonna go ahead and start on her eyes with Saddle Brown. And also go back and add a little more detail to her lips with crimson. I'm gonna have to let it dry on her eyes before I can go in on the cheeks. So now that the eyes have dried a bit, I can go ahead 
and darken the blush on the cheeks. And go back in on the eyes and darken part of them. Definitely need to get some more browns when I'm at Jerry's Artorama again. And applying some freckles. Actually gonna grab a smaller brush. Hit those with a little bit of water. And I'm also going to go ahead and fill in her hair, most of her hair, with this saddle brown. Actually, I think not. I think I'll use Baked Earth instead. And we'll go ahead and go over this with water as well. And you can see some of those colors get very bright after you've activated them, like um, the fuchsia we used on her skin and baked earth too. That's a lot more orange than I thought it would be. So we're definitely going to have to pick browns that kind of subdue it and make it read more as a highlight than as an overall hair color. All right, that needs to dry completely. All right, guys, so as with most watercolor, it is mostly about, you know, adding detail and tightening things up and work, working on things in stages and trying to be patient. So there's always a lot of back and forth, especially for me with watercolor. The other day I, um, I did a tutorial on, uh, I called it one layer watercolor, and it really isn't quite that. Um, it was basically just one layer of color per color and not building up color. And I, to me, it looked, it looked you know, unfinished, um, but it seemed to be well received. So for me, watercolor is very much about those layers. And right now I am building up some more uh, contrast over on the rose using Shiraz, which is a dark red color. And of course, the whole time I'm working, I'm thinking about all the colors I still need to acquire if I want to use watercolor pencils or Derwent Ink Tense watercolor pencils as a standalone product and not just as an addition to my exist existing watercolor collection. Go ahead and activate that color with some water. And I'm going to use Willow to try and build up some additional color in this hair. Unfortunately, as I'm working, I am realizing that I don't have quite the right browns. So that is definitely something I need to work on supplementing as I go back to Jerry's. I can always work back and forth between the two colors if I can't get quite what I'm looking for. And I will use water to blend this out. And 
and I have a little bit of overflow right down there. All right, we're gonna go ahead and put some of that Shiraz color here. And for some reason, I'm so used to ink tents being so much more vivid on um, watercolor paper, like when I'm doing my Kara pages, that it really feels a little bit muted this time. And I decided I wanted to go ahead and do the flowers blue, like blue forget-me-nots. I'm going to go ahead and color the rest of the flowers blue as well as the floating petals and I'll get back to you guys. All right, now that the flower petals are filled in, we're gonna go ahead and start um, activating them with water. And thankfully, pink, ugh, Peacock Blue has a lot to offer, a lot more than some of the other colors we've been painting with today. I feel like those browns are just really underwhelming as soon as you, you wet them down. One thing I'm noticing though with using color pencils this way or watercolor pencils rather this way is I lose a lot of the opportunity for the brush to do the work. So everything ends up um, very muddy and overly rendered for me. So illustrating with watercolor pencils in this manner just may not be a good fit for the way I draw or the way I like to render and handle color. All right, guys, so I actually want to intensify the eye color a little bit, and I will go back over it again with the dark bark. I just felt like the eyes were getting a little lost. And I'm adding another layer of willow to the hair. And then while it's still dry, I'm going to add in some more dark bark as well, or some start adding in the dark bark as well. And from there, I'll decide if I want to add a layer of water or not, because adding water seems to make willow very orange and just sort of a strange color. Now, when you add water to dark bark, in my experience, at least on other papers, you tend to get a much darker, richer color. So go ahead and just add a little, and we'll see how it goes. Because we are blending another layer of color as well. We're bl blending that layer of willow we put down before we put down the dark bark. We can always put down another layer of dark bark if we lose the contrast we've built up. And the goal isn't to make it look like it's all um, traditional watercolor. It's really just to play around with a medium I usually use in one way and maybe learn some new tricks for handling it or figure out how certain colors best perform. All right, it looks like it grayed things out a bit. So I'll let 
that dry. And while that's drying, I'm gonna go in to the flowers with deep indigo. Maybe I should do their centers first. Go ahead and grab spring green then. And ah, this sherbet lemon should make a nice mignette sort of color. Also at the point where I should decide on a color for her shirt and I think I want it to read as white so I'm going to very lightly color in some shadow with peacock blue and I'm trying to be very careful with it since peacock blue does turn into such a dark color when you add water. Let's go ahead and activate that and see what we get. I do sort of regret putting that big rose in the corner. It doesn't really feel like it belongs too well. I'm also going to use some deep indigo very gently. Draw in some cast shadows. And if I can find it, I'm going to use bark to go ahead and fill in the hair and darken it rather. Just a couple of those indigo shadows with a little bit of water. That's gonna make them a little more intense, but also a little more blended out. All right, and I think I'm going to leave it alone until tomorrow morning. Um, that will give me a chance to sleep on it and I may see things with fresher eyes tomorrow morning. So I'll see you guys then. All right guys, so it is not the next morning, but I'm at that point where I'm gonna make a bad decision because I've been staring at this and thinking about it. And something that's kind of bugging me is all the colors over here are too hot. I'm gonna regret this it's gonna activate a lot of those indigos that hadn't been activated. So some of those colors are going to have to be re reapplied in the morning and some of those colors decided to bleed and that really didn't have the effect I wanted. But you know, with art, you have to make mistakes in order to learn. And so, you know, that was a learning opportunity for me. All right, guys, it's now morning. This has had a chance to dry fully overnight. And I'm going to gently use a brown Caran d'Ache watercolor pencil to sort of add in some skin shadows. While that dries, I'm gonna go ahead and work on um, adding more contrast to the rose. And I'm gonna start with Shiraz. And I'm also going to use Violet. And then I'm going to use antique white to start adding in some white details. And if I can't get enough white, I'm gonna go ahead and pull out the white gouache.
All right, and since that's not really giving me the look I want, I'm gonna go ahead and pull out my white gouache. Alright guys, thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today while I uh, played around with watercolor pencils, a little bit of gouache. Um, I feel like maybe we learned something today. Um, I hope you guys did, I did, um, if only to learn that there are a lot of colors I still need if I want to do standalone watercolor pencil illustrations. Um, if you enjoyed this video, please take a moment to leave a like. And if you really enjoyed this video, please go ahead and share it to your social networks using the buttons below this video. Um, if you are looking for more watercolor goodness, head on over to my blog at natosoup.blogspot.com. I have an ongoing series called Watercolor Basics over there that you might find interesting. Um, and hopefully you'll find it helpful. Whoa, sorry, <laughs> trying to get this stuff picked up. If you have any questions, leave a comment below. And if you haven't yet, consider subscribing for more arty goodness like this. If you would like to help fund future videos like this, head on over to my Patreon and find out how to join my community of art nerds. That's at patreon.com slash natosoup. So I'm Becca Hilburn. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today and messing around with color pencils or watercolor pencils or really ink pencils, you know, whichever. Bye guys.